All right, so now that we've got the new gauges installed in the dash, there's only a few more steps to be completed before you can get that boat out on the water. So the first thing you need to do is, once the new gauges are all set up and installed, once you key on and put power to the gauges, they're going to go, what's, go through what we call an auto-detect mode. And we'll show you all that in a minute. That auto-detect mode, though, is basically going to do 95% of the work for you. It's going to go through, it's going to see what engine you have, different sensors that are on the boat, and it's going to set up that gauge according to what is actually in your boat, keeping you from having to go through and do that individually. Now, I'm also going to show you a few of the most frequently asked questions, though, about, setup, about setting up this gauge. There's different calibrations you can do, things where you can turn screens on and off and really customize that gauge to your individual liking. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, power up the boat. It'll automatically apply uh, uh, power to the gauges. We're going to run through the auto detect mode and I'll show you some of those calibration settings. All right, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and put power, keen on, put power to the gauges. Okay, so you can see we're in auto detect on both our speedometer and tachometer. It doesn't jump into it immediately. As you can see, it's asking you to hit mode on both gauge and, that'll, and that will start the auto detect sequence. So I'm gonna go ahead, select mode on the speedometer and the tachometer. They're both running through the process. All right, and there they are, they're both set up. At this point in time, you could really go ahead and get right out on the water and you're ready to boat. However, a couple of the things that I did mention I wanted to show you was a trim calibration and how to calibrate your fuel tanks. The first thing I want to show you is the trim calibration. That's in the Cal 1 settings. So to get there, you want to hit the mode and the plus button, and you want to hold those down simultaneously. When you see Cal 1, you just go ahead and release. There we are. Then there's a number of different screens you can go ahead and walk through. So first is the remote screens, remote LCD light, and remote LCD contrast. Just real briefly on those, you can turn those on or off, and what that allows you to do is control those functions for all your gauges through one single gauge. So it's a nice additional feature there if you've got a number of gauges. Continuing on though, I want to get to the trim calibration. Once there, you want to go ahead and select edit, and at this point you just follow the on-screen prompts. This is asking you to trim full down. So you're going to go ahead and trim the boat completely down. At that point in time, you'll hit the save, which is the plus button. It's then going to ask you to trim full up. You'll again hit the save button once you're to that point. You're then going to trim to your trailer point where that, is, uh, where that position is optimized. You're going to hit save and you've completed your trim calibration. You can cycle through the rest of the features in Cal 1 at that time, modifying to your liking and, uh, and you'll be set. One of the other things I wanted to show you was how to uh, calibrate your fuel tanks. The fuel calibration is within the Cal 2 settings. So just like we got into Cal 1, you're going to hold down Mode and Plus. It's going to cycle through Quick Cal, Cal 1, and Cal 2. And once you see Cal 2, you want to go ahead and release. The first thing that's going to pop up is that fuel tank calibration. It's going to ask you for the capacity of your fuel tank. If they're brand new gauges, there's a good chance they're going to read 0.0. .0. So obviously, you want to make sure you look at your owner's manual and you get the right capacity of your uh, fuel tank in there. For this, we've gone ahead and put in a 50 gallon fuel tank. Once that's in, you want to hit the mode button, which will save that in the system. After that, it's going to ask you if you want to calibrate that fuel tank. You can either skip it or you can edit. We're going to go ahead and go into the edit. You're going to have two options, default or to add. And what it's basically saying is adding fuel. So before you get into this, if you're going to do the add feature, you want to make sure you have a completely empty fuel tank. A lot of people use the default and that's fine, but what we're going to show you today is how to map out that fuel tank. So we're going to go ahead and hit add. We're going to assume we have an empty fuel tank for our purposes today. And basically, again, you're just following the on-screen prompts. This is saying empty tank. And once you do have an empty tank, you're going to want to go ahead and hit save. And just like we did with the trim, it's now going to basically map out that tank and it's going to learn where that empty, in the, empty point in the tank is. After that, it's going to ask you to fill it up a quarter full and it's going to make it extremely easy for you as it's not going to just say fill a quarter full, it's going to tell you what a quarter full is uh, off of the capacity of your tank. So this is telling us to fill to 12 and a half gallons. So you go ahead and fill 12, put 12 and a half gallons in your tank. Once that's done, you hit save. After that, it's going to ask you to move it to the, uh, the halfway point, so 25 gallons, then the three quarter point, and then 
a completely full tank. After doing each one of those, you'll go ahead and save that setting. Once complete, it's then going to ask you if you have a second tank on board. You can specify whether it's a water tank, a waste tank, or a fuel tank, or if one's not installed. If it is a second fuel tank, go ahead and select that, and then it'll ask you to step through the same procedures we just did for calibrating uh, your, your fuel tank one. All right, the last thing I do, I do want to show you is how to do a master reset. A lot of times you might add a new sensor, um, or even during the setup, if you think you've, you've erred in some way, you can always perform a master reset, and that's basically going to take that gauge back to the factory settings you know, when you initially installed it. The way to do a master reset is just by holding down the plus and the minus button simultaneously, and you're going to want to do that for about 10 seconds. Master reset's going to pop up, and you're going to see two bars that are uh, basically moving towards each other. You want to make sure those, you want to hold that until it connects, and then you can release. At this point, it's asking you to press the mode button to confirm the master reset. So we're going to go ahead and press mode. It's going to go through. It completely resets the gauge to those factory settings and takes you back to that auto detect functionality when you first turned on your gauges for that first time. At that point, you can run through that same procedure that you've done before and, uh, and go through and begin customizing your gauge again. Well, thanks so much for joining us as we went through the process of replacing our SmartCraft gauges. We've got a lot of work still to do on this, so we're going to get back to that now. But we encourage you to continue to look us up online at www.mercurymarine.com where we're going to have other instructional videos just like this one, as well as other information and other videos on many of Mercury's other great products. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.